specialised. Epic FSR has always been a unique bike for those who get a semi at the idea of a semi hardtail. But is the Evo Comp super affordable, super lightweight trail bike or a slightly rowdy XC bike? My name's Guy Keston. I've been professionally testing mountain bikes and other bikes for over 22 years. And for the past few months, I've been razzing around the trails of Yorkshire on Specialized Epic Comp Evo. So let's see how it does. Specialized Epic FSR has always been super light. Short travel race rig with this unique brain suspension system. This automatically Inertia valve activated, damper sat next to the rear wheel that only opens up the suspension when it gets a hit from underneath. And that's still in place on this Epic Evo with five different levels of compression tune in the brain or brain fade, the specialized call it. And if you have it in one of the higher settings on the brain fade, sort of. Well, anywhere three through five, to be honest, it's very noticeable. But it's quite a clunk as the shock opens and it begins to work like a full suspension bike. And in five, the little spring that holds the valve down is down tight enough that it really only goes full sus if you properly clout it. But if you're into your kicking hard on smooth trails or you generally prefer a hardtail feel, but with that little bit of emergency suspension save, then happy days. But then again, if you run it in one, it's pretty much open all the time. And it's a classically neutral kind of FSR feel. Very smooth and not pedal influenced at all. And while the brain pot adds a little bit of weight, around 200 grams, it's still a very lightweight bike. Certainly for something with trail kit on with an alloy frame at this price point. So, because you can just switch it off if you don't like it, it's not the brain that creates the defining characteristics of this Epic Comp Evo. It's what it's made of and the shape it is. And this specialized smart weld frame with this really clever alloy technology with the oversized butt ends so you can run a really thin tube ball, create a really light, fluid feeling frame. It does give it a lovely ride quality. It's a pivotless back end to save weight, simplify things, and save a bit of cost as well probably. But in terms of geometry, it's definitely showing its age now. I mean, 446 mil reach on this large, and even most XC bikes now are going towards 460. And that means you need an 80 mil stem sat on here to keep the reach in there. And that's going to be fine for some people, but it's definitely not progressive trail, literally by any stretch of the imagination. And that's what Specialized are kind of hinting what they created with this Evo. A more fun, feisty version of their race bike. So what does that actually mean? Well, the obvious difference, it's got 120 mil fork up front, which knocks the head angle back to 68.5 degrees. And attached to that 100 mil, 120 mil fork is a 750 mil riser bar. Still an 80 mil stem. And a ground control, proper chunky trail tire, rather than a skinny slick and even the skinny slick you get on the back is a grid carcass so it's a tough tire spec and you've got a 180 mil rotor as well Wah! this is very much designed as the epic for having fun on and it's also the only alloy friend epic which makes it more affordable than all the carbon ones but with noticeable flex from that Reba fork at front and noticeable flex from the back end as well. Oh. 
<laughs> hmm. As you can see, it does have a little issue with turning in hard. It's such a distinctive bike to ride. The ability to just go fully rigid as soon as the trail smooths out and deliver a proper hardtail kick is unique. What? <laughs> yeah, that wasn't the best display of it, was it? And I was just about to say, <laughs> it copes with some things much better than it copes with others. I mean, drops, I've been particularly impressed by how, it, how well it lands them. Uh, the way they repositioned that brain now behind the rear axle and sloped it slightly means it's very rare that you feel anything when you're dropping it off. So you get all the benefits of full suspension then. And of course, sections like this, fire road climbs when you're out of the saddle, that's what it's designed for. You know, that genuinely hard tail sensation is why the brain is loved by so many cross country racers. And has been since it was introduced well over a decade ago. But that really is an acquired taste. And I can just feel it just creeping on and off the brain there as I put the power down. If most bikes felt like this, you'd take it straight back to the shop. I said it was broken, but it's clunking around this much. But as you can see, through little stutter bump, rooty sections that would kill the speed on hardtail, it's very effective through there. And you've got to remember, it's way more responsive than the brains of old, which it's one of my mates who rode one of the first ones, remember he put it. It was like playing scissors, paper, stone with the trail in terms of knowing what it was going to do when you put it into a corner or down a descent. Now, if you want something conventional, get a stump jumper. Stump jumper ST. And 120 mm travel. And the good news is, I've got one of those hanging on the workshop wall, and it might just be one of the smoothest, friendliest, most practical trail bikes I've ever ridden. And you've got to remember that the specialised chisel, their alloy hardtail, is a spectacularly smooth and well-mannered race bike. And something of a bargain for what feels like an ultra-premium titanium stroke steel frame. So in summary, I can totally see why specialised have taken you know, the last remaining alloy epic frame and turned it into something turned it into something a bit more trail influenced and exciting and to be fair with what they've got they've done a pretty good job the specs pretty much bang on for the kind of thing you want to be doing on it and it's still really really light at 13 kilos it sits pretty much halfway between something like anthem alloy at 12.3 and then uh, Trek Top Fuel, the new one, or Scott Spark 940, about 30.8, combined with that lightweight. Now that semi hardtail brain shock really does kick hard. So, if you're still on the carbon sole side of uh, trail riding, then it's definitely a light, hard kicking bike. But, and to be fair, even though it's super skinny, that long stroke rear shock actually does an impressive job of eating up the square edges as long as you keep the brain fully open. And the spec itself, again, pretty well sorted in terms of trail, although these tyres do have their limits as I showed a second ago. But in terms of the actual shape of the bike, at 446 mil reach, at 8 dependence on an 80 mil stem to get some length in there, and the fact that the lightweight smart alloy frame is significantly flexible really does cut into the levels of control and confidence once you start trying to work it hard or the trail starts bullying you around. I mean, as always. Any riding is possible on pretty much any bike, but compared to the latest uh, generation of slightly long travel XC bikes, I'm definitely 
by this by the seat of my van trying to stay in touch with Shad on his eye tower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Burn. I'm laughing about it and I still have him on the climb so I guess it depends where your priorities lie really are you going to get a semi about the idea of a semi hardtail or do you want a properly capable trail bike rather than just an XC bike playing dress up but either way it's certainly a distinctive ride it's a bike that people definitely still consider and it's a bike that people really should consider because it hasn't got that much opposition this bike is totally unique but that ability for it to automatically change from hardtail to full suspension bike when it senses a bump is absolutely amazing and nothing no other bike does it and brain bikes have always been super popular people obviously bloody love it considering it's got all this trail kit on it's still really really light i can't think of any other bike you could build up put all this gear on and still get down to this weight certainly not with an aluminium frame at this price and it carries speed really really well and it's fun you know up until the point you've overwhelmed it it is a really fun fast bike and it's definitely more capable than a standard epic but at that point the fact it's got a short top tube and a long stem and the frame is flexy that's what trips you up that's what lets the controls literally slide out of your fingers it is always going to be a compromise between trail bike and xc bike but then that's reflected in the weight and that's reflected in the fact that it's got a genuine hardtail kick i've talked enough i've maybe talked too much watch the video watch the tech talk around and make your own mind up so uh thanks very much for watching just like to say thanks to specialized for the helmet uh thanks to sumi for the shirt Thanks to Specialized for the absolutely awesome uh, SWAT cargo bib shorts. I might be uh, slightly divided in my opinion on the uh, bike there, but these shorts are absolutely superb. I pretty much ride these every mountain bike ride. Uh, seven mesh for the shorts, O'Neill for the pads, Mons Royale for the socks, Specialized for the shoes, and 100% for the gloves. Uh, just to make it clear, Specialized haven't paid for this video. It's they sent me the bike for review just because I asked for it because I was a lot of people were asking what my opinion was on it and I'd not ridden the Epic Evo. I'd ridden the Epic before, but uh, I just wanted to kind of get it on the channel so people could get my opinion on it. So if there's anything I've missed out, get busy in the comments below. And thanks for your time watching. Like I say, subscribe, click for notifications, and if you fancy a bit more exclusive in-depth coverage and some early edits, get on my Patreon channel. Thanks a lot for your time, though. Cheers.